is your captain. Welcome to Flying Solo. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and welcome back to another Flying Solo where I take three of your questions and I answer them. As you can see, we have a new set and our goal is to do a new Flying Solo each and every week, so be sure to tune in. And this week's episode is brought to you by My Gear Vault, the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear. How are you keeping track of all your serial numbers, receipts, and all of that good stuff? I personally use it. Check it out for free at MyGearVault.com. Download it for iOS and Android, and let's get into the first question. We have EJ Ambriz. And he says, I want to complete a photo story and there is a unique local business that I want to be my subject. Could you give me some advice on how to approach the story and the business with the idea? So this is a great question. And I think the first thing you need to do is obviously figure out how are you going to go to this business? The best thing to do is be prepared when you go to them. You're going to want to have a, a quick outline, uh, a couple of paragraphs saying, this is what I want to do. This is my hope. Here's some sample photos that I've shot in the past in photo stories that I've done with other people or other businesses. And if you already don't have one that you did with a business, well, you can follow a friend around, follow a parent around, follow somebody around who has something similar that you can then create that into a story so that you can prove what you're doing actually works. So that's that's one of the best pieces of advice that I can give you right there is to go and actually do something before you go to them and have nothing to show because you have nothing to show them they're probably not go going to want to work with you so have a bunch of great images to show them have the story and then literally pick up the phone walk into the place find out who the manager is don't don't go in at a time when they're super busy actually the first step i would probably do is send them an email hi my name is not Slim Shady, but my name is so-and-so, in this case it's EJ, and you say, I'm looking to do X, Y, and Z. Make it quick, get it right to the point. Either I'm charging you or I'm not charging you, uh, and then here's a link to the work that I've done. I look forward to speaking with you soon, and then you can follow up from there. So that's really what I would do. Did I ask, answer everything? Unique business that I want to be a subject? Uh, could you give me some advice on how to approach the story? Well, in terms of the story, is it's tell the story of what they do. If it's a hair salon, then you want to tell the story of the cutting the hair. Look at all the clothes. Same thing I always say with the photos. The close-ups, the, close the telephotos, the mediums, the details. Do the same things with your photo stories when you walk in there. And that's where I'll leave that one. So good question. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, that name I cannot read because it's in Greek, but the name is Demetrius from Greece. Is black and white photography still relevant today? I'm a black and white photographer. I do quite a lot in black and white. Uh, I love old black and white photographs, old noir film, etc., or films, etc., but it seems that outside of photography community, nobody cares for black and white. Now, I'm not sure that nobody cares for black and white, more so as not a lot of photographers are sharing solid iconic looking black and white images. There's a lot of people taking photos. There's a lot of people converting to sepia tones or split tones, maybe not working so much in the black and whites that you and I are used to seeing. I like to put out a lot of black and white type of images. High contrasty for just about everything that I shoot. Sometimes, of course, it gets pulled back. But I think that they're iconic. I just think there's not a lot of people putting out those type of images. And a lot of people are used to seeing a lot, just scrolling. Through. You know what? You're right. When I scroll through Instagram, I don't see a lot of black and white images popping up in my feed for the thousand or so people that I personally follow. So maybe you're absolutely right here. I just think we need to keep putting it out there into the world. We need to keep putting out quality images, and if it feels good in black and white, then you put it out there. You also run into the people that don't really process their images. They may just shoot it straight up in the camera in color and then put it out into the world. So a lot of it comes down to the educational aspect. How do we do this? How do we process it? Because some people will then shoot the monochrome feature in their camera, which will then, if you're shooting JPEG, bake in that monochrome, and if you're shooting raw, what's cool is you'll get the monochrome preview on the back of the camera. Not that I would ever do that myself, but then you still have all of the color detail in those raw files when you save it. So I do absolutely think it's relevant and I think it tells a great story when you shoot in black, well, not when you shoot in black and white, but when you process really well in the black and white images. So moving on, 
We got a gear related question. I like getting gear related questions. Remember, if you're going to submit a gear related question, I need to know what you currently have, what your budget is, and what you like to shoot so I can better help guide you to find the right piece of gear. So we've got Kirk Purnell. I need advice on long lenses. Looking at the Sigma 150 to 600 or the 50 to 500, I shoot with a 5D Mark IV. I have a Canon 16 to 35 L, a 24 to 70 L, and a Sigma 70 to 200 2.8. He shoots his kids and wildlife, and some never shoot. It's all right to shoot wildlife if you have a permit, and I don't think it's ever right to shoot your kids. And let me check. Is it ever right? No, it's not ever right to shoot your kids. Uh, let's see. I watched your review of the 150 to 600, but did not see a review of the 50 to 500, and my budget is around $2,000. So here's the interesting thing. You can get the 150 to 600. I've used both from Sigma. Tamron also makes a 150 to 600, so you can test them out, rent them from a rental place, and decide which one works for you. But I found for hand holding, I can use the contemporary one from Sigma, the 150 to 600, and it gave me fantastic results. It's lighter than the pro, the 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 sports model that they have, the Sport Edition, which is like two pounds heavier. I took that out to a Phillies game. I needed to use that on a monopod. For the thousand bucks, I don't think you can go wrong with the contemporary version. It's not built as heavy or as tough as the sport, but I don't think you're going to run into terribly too many issues, and it's going to be great for photographing the kids outdoors. It's actually going to be great for most things outdoors that you need to get at a distance. But the one issue you need to remember is that it's not a 2.8 like your uh, 16 to 35, 24 to 70, or the 70 to 200. So when you're shooting at 5.6 to 6.3, if something is not a super deep background, like you're shooting a soccer match, like the kids playing soccer, and there's a bunch of people in the background or porta potties in the background, you're not going to blow out that background as easy. But there's really no other way to get a mega super zoom lens without breaking the bank. So I'd just tell you to spend the thousand bucks, save that extra thousand bucks, and take your kids out to dinner, or the wife too, something along those lines, but it shouldn't be a thousand dollar meal. That is the third question. If you'd like to submit your questions, you can send them to bit.ly slash fro critiques. That's where you could also submit your flying solo. Well, that is flying solo. You could also submit rapid fire critiques and rapid fire website critiques at the same exact link. Don't forget to download my gear vault. It's free for iOS and Android. Leave your comments down below with how you would have answered these questions. That is flying solo from the new set. That's the first one. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. And to finish this up, don't forget to subscribe. To check out the last flying solo, go ahead and click up on the screen right now, or you could click on the other video that's some cool random video that I'm not sure what it is just yet, but I know it's going to be awesome. So click on it. Click on one of them. Flip a coin. Heads or tails? I don't know. <laughs>